Nearly three quarters of the country is entirely controlled by one political party, the highest number in over six decades. The most worrying thing about Cuomo's comments isn't that he was saying something offensive or intolerant, but that he might have been saying something true. Joining me now is political editor and White House correspondent at the Huffington Post, Sam Stein. Sam, before we get to Andrew, Andrew Cuomo and how this plays politically, I do want to start with this idea that you know, the president came in in 2008 saying we weren't, one red, we weren't red America or blue America, we were just the United States of America. Um, it seems actually, electorally speaking, that that's not very true, and, and, and the divisions are getting deeper. Um, and I think this may strike some as incredulous, but I do think we're a stronger democracy when there are dissenting viewpoints and we are forced to discuss and debate. Our um, but in That's terms crazy. of the trend, in, ter in terms of the trend, I'd love to know what you think of, of the way in which we seem to be dividing up the country. Well, I think, you know, what you just said would probably be agreed to by the president himself, who, you know, famously talked about bridging this divide. Clearly, the divide hasn't been bridged. Uh, we have two parties that uh, are very much uh, at odds over a lot of issues, even though on many of the issues the public is clearly in support of certain policies, but the parties themselves are at odds. And uh, they seem to be moving in opposite directions as well. And through a you know variety of ways and reasons, including redistricting, uh, you know, polarization, et cetera, certain states are now becoming one-party states. Uh, New York is a little bit more uh, confusing that because the moderate Republicans do have a lot of sway in the state Senate. But you know, Andrew Cuomo was right in a sense that ideologically, if you're an extreme conservative, you're probably not going to win in New York. Uh, just like if you are extremely liberal you probably are not going to win in Mississippi. And so we do have this sort of patchwork of you know, ideologically different states popping up around the country, and it's creating this interesting study of what works and what doesn't. Well, and I think, I mean, I would argue that we are also creating a landscape of the haves and the have-nots, people that yeah. have access to marriage equality, the p states where the poor have access to Medicaid and health care. Uh, I'll, re I'll read you an excerpt from the, the New York Times, which talks about the strange juxtapositions here and focuses on Minnesota and Wisconsin. In 2013, Wisconsin's lawmakers cut income taxes. They approved an expansion of school vouchers they passed a requirement that abortion providers have admitting privileges at local hospitals and that women seeking abortions get ultrasounds. In Minnesota, lawmakers sent more money to public schools, raised income taxes on the highest earners. They allowed some undocumented immigrants to get in-state tuition for public universities. They legalized same-sex marriage. This is what I mean about, yeah. you know, you have one state neighboring another where a few miles east, life is radically different. In many cases, I would argue, radically better because of the one-state rule. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, just take a look at the Affordable Care Act, where the Medicaid expansion, because of the Supreme Court decision, was left to the states themselves. And now you have some of the poorest of poor in the country not getting access to uh, affordable health care vis-a-vis Medicaid uh, because their governors decided it wasn't in their political self-interest to do so. Uh, same goes with gay and lesbian Americans. Uh, some of them will simply have to just travel a few miles to get married, but they can in their own state. And again, you're creating this patchwork of different governances, which is you know, problematic in some sense, but also fascinating in other because you can see what works and you can see what doesn't. I, I was uh, watching Governor Christie's speech today. And he was talking about how, you know, his economic agenda was better uh, for jobs and growth than those of his neighboring states. And I think it was Slate's Dave Weigel who pointed out that unemployment in the neighboring states around New Jersey was actually lower than New Jersey. So you can test people's pro propositions, their uh, governing propositions against actual results. Um, Sam, let, let's talk for a second about Governor Cuomo and the effect sure. that th these comments have. I mean, he, the, the governor has been very successful, actually, in forging bipartisan coalitions, for example, on the issue of gay marriage. He has raised money from Republicans. I believe he just met with 50 high-profile Republicans at the Harvard Club last week. Yeah. He, uh, Ken Langone from Home Depot gave him $50,000. The publisher of the New York Post has given him money. How much <laughs> does this have a ripple effect, do you think, uh, among m moderate Republicans? Obviously, we know what the effect is among conservative Republicans. I, I think this is like one of those, you know, two, three-day stories that eventually evaporates. He's already come out and clarified his comments, uh, saying he was stating what exactly you said at the top of the broadcast. But keep in mind, in New York, the average Republican is not your super conservative uh, Tea Party Republican. It's more of a business-minded Republican, at least uh, closer to Manhattan, that is. And those people uh, probably would agree with some of the sentiment. Uh, with 
to, for instance, issues like gay marriage, where the uh, same-sex marriage campaign in New York was propped up heavily uh, by major donations from big-pocketed conservative Republicans in Manhattan who thought it was a civil rights issue. Uh, and they almost led the charge as much as Andrew Cuomo. So I don't think this hurts him in the long run. Obviously, it was an ill-stated uh, remark on his behalf that he had to clarify. But as far as scandals go, I think uh, you know people can sleep easy on this one. We, we had a lot of scandals for, to choose from this week. Yeah, I know. This Come doesn't on. just register at the top. The Huffington Post, <laughs> Sam Stein. Thank you as always, my friend. Thanks, Alex.